Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to the Caledonia annual result video presentation. This is the results for our 2016 year uh, that were released yesterday. I must just um, uh, advise that the presentation we'll be talking to is on our website and uh, you will see some of the slides in this presentation, but the full presentation is, is, in the, is on the website. Um, firstly, let me just draw your attention to the disclaimer, which is on the second page, uh, just the normal uh, housekeeping that we need to address. But uh, uh, yes, it's very good to have you join us on this presentation and especially with a set of results that uh, we've managed to put together for the 2016 year and obviously it reflects an excellent effort and performance by our Blanket Mine and the Blanket Mine team in producing a fantastic set of production results. I'm joined on the call today by Donna Roots, the COO, and uh, Mark Learmonth, who is going to be contacting in from London. And uh, we'll run you through the aspects of our business and draw your attention to some of the highlights. Just from my perspective, I would just like to highlight key areas that were very, very pleasing from our perspective. Firstly, we set ourselves a target of 50,000 ounces, which was a 17-18% increase over the previous year. Uh, that's no mean feat when you really are dealing with uh, pretty much the same infrastructure that uh, we had to uh, uh, service the operation. Donald will talk to some of the operational uh, aspects that uh, he has developed at the mine, but it really is no mean feat by just increasing production at the same mine while you are in, embarking on brand new projects uh, and what Donna will talk to the projects that we've got uh, ongoing at the moment, the central shaft sinking, the development below 750 meter level. So it's, it's very rewarding to see that the team on the ground is capable of executing the plans that Donna and his technical team put together and uh, it's, it's bearing fruit. A, a really important aspect that we talk about all the time, but nobody should ever lose sight of, is that all the development work and all the expansion work that takes place at Blanket is uh, being self-funded by the operational performance of Blanket and the cash flows generated by Blanket. That uh, puts us in a very, very strong position that we are masters of our own destiny we set our own pace, we set our own targets, and we know that we've got the funding to achieve. Uh, there are very good reasons why we've set uh, the pace that we have, uh, and we've explained those many, many times, so we won't go into those again. Obviously, with the, the rise in production, we get the concomitant uh, reduction in overall costs. Mark will talk about those in greater detail, uh, as will Dana. But just generally, as we've said in the past, as Blanket gen uh, produces more gold, you will see a steady decline in the cost of uh, each ounce produced at the cash cost level and at the all-in sustaining cost level. And that is evidenced by these results. Um, obviously, uh, we, we have been the beneficiary of a slightly higher gold price over this reporting period and uh, we, we are very grateful because that has flowed all the way through into profitability and through the cash flow statement and enables uh, Blanket to expand at a pace that uh, suits our, our needs. And um, Donna will talk to again the, the CapEx program, but uh, we spent nearly $20 million on the, on the mine this last year and that augurs well for, for very good performance going forward. So with no more from me, um, let's get into the, the nuts of, of the business and uh, I'll hand over to Donna now. We will just talk you through the operational issues and then Mark will join us and he will run through the financial aspects. So once again, thank you very much for joining us and I'll, I'll hand over to Donna. Thank you very much, Steve. If we look at uh, slide five, production and revenues, uh, Blanket Mines set consecutive records as, uh, quarterly and annually as far as gold production and revenue are concerned. And this was mainly due to the extra production we got 
from uh, um, resources below 750. The tons milled continued to increase steadily to about 510,000 tons mined and milled in 2016, a new record again, which reflects the recent investment in underground infra infrastructure development and the commissioning of the new mill in quarter three of 2016. Great is expected to con continue to uh, gradually uh, go upwards to about four grams a ton. This will hap happen over the next two to three years um, as we again get into the higher grade areas below 750, especially at Blanket and AR South. The average realized gold price was 8% higher year on year, combined with increased production and lower unit unit costs contributed to this significant increase in profitability and cash generation for both the quarter and the year. Slide 7, gold production. Blanket mine set new quarterly and annual production records with quarterly production increased to 13,590 ounces as a result of increased tonnage mold. Annual guidance was achieved, and we're very proud of the 50,351 ounces that we produced. Production was boosted by improved access to resources below 750, with the new declines that we uh, put down to AR self, and the second decline that we're starting to, to access AR main. Production guidance for 2017 is 60,000 ounces, a 20% increase on the 2016 production target achieved. Targeted on-month cost and all-in sustaining costs for 2017 in the range of between $600 per ounce to $630 and then $810 per ounce to $850. Management is confident of delivering the long-term uh, target of 80,000 ounces as development below 750 continues to access the resources and the completion of central shaft. Central shaft will be completed mid to end of uh, 2018. Improved underground logistics and the completion of the tramming loop, as well as the extra loop around four shaft with extra tips, uh, helped us to, to boost operational flexibility on 22 level. Looking at slide, 14 operational issues. Uh, central shelf is progressing well. We achieved a depth of 633 meters as at the end of February, and we should be holding on 22 level, sort of the second part of April this year. Unstable electricity supply from grid has impeded work and requires the installation of equipment to protect blankets equipment. Um, this equipment has been designed and we will upgrade the feed from Zessa um, and this should be operational around about the ed end of June this, this year. Um, backup electricity generation capacity has improved re reliability. Uh, work has commenced on a new projects that I already um, mentioned and these new projects decline one and decline two is to give us more flexibility and help us increase production until central shelf is commissioned. Um, keep in mind that these declines are new shelves as well, so we are actually doing three shelves at the same time. Number eight, bore milk was commissioned in October 2016, and this will allow us to, to, um, to increase our capacity to be able to hand full tonnage required to do 80,000 ounces a year. Metallurgical recoveries is still impeded by the um, old oxygen plant that we have. Uh, we are in the final stages of um, buying a new oxygen plant, uh, which should be operational, I, I would guess, about the last quarter in um, uh, 2017. Then we also have an increased focus on our drilling, deep drilling below 750. Um, we already announced the increase in indicated resources last year, June, and that will be ongoing going forward. And we've got a lot more confidence in what we've got below us 
and the future looks bright. Thank you very much. Thanks, Donna. Um, I think now it's time. Let me hand over to Mark and uh, let's get the financial aspects of these results, uh, which I, I trust you'll find very interesting. Um, so thank, thank you, Steve. Um, starting on, on page three, just looking at some of the results highlights. Um, what you see here is, as we've, as we've already mentioned, uh, gold production in the year was, was up, up 18%, 50,000 ounces compared to just, just under 43,000 ounces in 2015. And the various um, cost measures, so the online cost per ounce and the oil and sustaining cost per ounce, they were both, um, they were both down. Again, we'll come back to that in a bit more detail later. Um, average average realised gold price was up by about 8% from um, $1,139 an ounce to $1,232 an ounce. And all of those three factors combined uh, resulted in a nearly an 80% increase in gross profit from just over $13 million in 2015 to uh, $23.5 million in 2016. As you go down the profit and loss account, uh, there were some other items of income, which we'll talk about in a minute, but the, but the, attribute, the um, earnings per share level, attributed uh, adjusted basic earnings per share, that increased by nearly 150% from 8.8 .8 cents for 2015 to 21.4 cents for 2016. And really, you know, some of these accounts can get quite complex because of uh, the new, new accounting policies. So a lot of people look at cash. And we have two, two cash measures here at the bottom of, of page three. Uh, the closing cash at the end of the year was up from 10.9 million to $14.3 million. And you can see a very substantial increase in the, uh, the rate at which we were generating cash from operating activities. And that increased from a bit, bit under $7 million last year to over $23 million this year. And so that's just to be clear, that's cash coming out of the operation before CapEx uh, and before dividends and any, 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 debt, any debt drawdowns or repayments. So very strong financial performance. Turning to page four, a bit, bit more detail on the, um, on the income statement. Um, revenue is quite straightforward. Um, you know, we produce the ounces, we sell the ounces. We get the realized um, gold price less one and a quarter percent um, early settlement discount. If you look closely at the royalty, you'll see that the royalty charge for the year was slightly less than five um, percent. And that's because in the course of the year, we benefited from one of the two measures the Zimbabwe government introduced to help stimulate increased gold production. And the first of these measures was that we benefited from a, a slight reduction in the uh, royalty rate um, from 5% to 3% in respect of incremental production in the year. So whereas last year we produced just under 43,000 ounces, this year we produced just over 50. So on about 7,000 ounces of incremental production, uh, at the average gold price of 1232, we benefited from a rebate of 2% on the royalty, which was worth about $181,000. So not, not massive, but uh, a very welcome step in the right direction. We'll talk about production costs later and GNA costs later. Um, but you see a strong increase in EBITDA from uh, nearly $9 million to just under $20 million. Uh, depreciation, that doesn't change very much. Even though we're continuing to spend very aggressively on the uh, central shaft, those assets that we're creating um, actually won't start to be depreciated until the, the central shaft comes into production in 2018. Um, so that explains why the uh, depreciation doesn't char charge doesn't move very much. And then we get some of the interesting items. So other income for the year it was $1.3 million. Of that $1.3 million, $1.1 million relates to the second measure that the Zimbabwe government introduced in the course of the year, which was an export incentive credit. And what it, what it means is that for the larger gold producers such as, such as Blanket Mine, they were getting a 2.5% um, a two, two um, export incentive on their, on their revenues. Um, which we've added back as, as other income. Now that, that scheme was uh, announced by the Zimbabwe government in May 2016, but we weren't clear how we were going to receive um, the benefit of that um, incentive payment, if, if, if we were going to receive it at all. Um, and so we didn't account for it until we'd actually received the money. And lo and behold, uh, towards the end of the year, in, in late December, 
um, we actually received the uh, 1.1 million dollars um, in US dollars paid into our bank account, which we've just used in the ordinary course of business. So having received it at the end of the year, we've accounted for it for the year, and going forwards, we'll continue to account for it as other income. Um, and it's worth noting that whereas the benefit in 2016 was 2.5% of our revenues, um, in 2017 it will be 3.5% of our revenues. So that's a very significant uh, stimulus to, um, to allow companies, to encourage companies like, uh, like Caledonia and Blanket to increase production. And it's a very welcome move by the Zimbabwean authorities. The um, cash settled the share based payment of uh, 0.8 million. The bulk of that relates to uh, an expense uh, arising from the long term incentive program. Uh, the, the LTIP program was approved by shareholders in, at the AGM in 2015, uh, but could only be implemented in 2016 because of some uh, complexities arising from South African exchange controls. Um, the big driver behind that, um, that, that uh, charge is the increase in the share price. Uh, and so as the share price increases, the size of that, um, of that um, expense and the, the accrual will build up and then will be settled in cash in early 2019. Uh, we mentioned in May, in quarter two, that we'd sold, we'd realized $3.2 million on the sale of some uh, treasury bills which have been issued to us. Um, and so we recognize those as other income as well. Uh, and all of those, all of those uh, contribute to a very significant increase in operating profit, which was up from eight and a half million dollars in 2015 to 19 million dollars in 2016. The tax charge uh, appears to have gone up very significantly. Last year it was 2.4 million. This year it was 7.7 .7 million. Of that 7.7 .7 million tax charge in the year, um, about 4.6 million uh, relates to deferred tax. And so you'll see in the, when we talk about the cash flows in a minute, you'll see that the, um, the cash tax payment was, um, was only about two and a half million dollars. Um, so of that 7.7 .7 million, but much more than half of it actually isn't, isn't a cash tax payment at all. And so all of those equate to net profit of 11 million dollars. And on an adjusted basis, so stripping out the unusual items, so stripping out things like the, the benefit of the, uh, the sale of the treasury bills, um, stripping out uh, deferred tax. So on an adjusted basis, earnings per share for the year increased from 8.8 .8 cents a share to 21.4 cents a share. So uh, a very creditable performance for the year. Just turning to slide six and just a word about um, our, our dividends. Um, we've been paying a dividend for uh, some time now. In the course of 2016, we did increase the dividend payment initially it was one and one eighth uh, US cents per share. Um, in July, we increased that to one and three eighths cents per share. Um, and hopefully, as we begin to uh, see further benefits arising from the continued investment in Blanket, and those benefits really being the increased cash flow, um, we will, in 2018 onwards, have much more cash available to uh, consider things like increasing the dividend, perhaps share buybacks, and, and, and contemplating new investment opportunities. So the dividend is, is important to management. We know it's important to shareholders. Uh, our dividend yield is currently about 3.8%, uh, and it is um, very conservative in terms of our, uh, our cash cover and our payout ratio. Turning to page eight, just a bit more detail on our uh, production costs. Uh, so what you see here on page eight is you see uh, the online cost per ounce fell from just over $700 an ounce in 2015 to $636 an ounce in 2016. And the all-in sustaining cost also fell quite significant from um, $1,037 to $912 an ounce. The all-in sustaining cost does reflect the, the benefit of the, um, of the export incentive credit and it also also reflects royalties um, as well. So that, that accounts for some of the some of the um, some of the fall. At the bottom half of that table, you can see uh, how the production how the um, the costs break down. Uh, the production costs break down. So um, wages and salaries for the year is, is just over twelve million dollars, pretty much unchanged uh, from the previous year. We don't see significant uh, wage inflation in Zimbabwe, and even though we're continuing to increase production. We don't, we're not having to significantly increase the, uh, we are increasing the number of workers, but there's not a massive increase. And so that's why, uh, that's why the, uh, the salary bill, the online salary bill remains fairly, stats, fairly, um, fairly fixed. 
clearly consumables have gone up from 14.4 million to 16.3 million, and that reflects the increased uh, tons uh, processed. Um, and online administration, again, that's pretty stable, 2.7 increasing to 2.9 um, uh, million dollars. Turning to page nine, uh, GNA. In overall terms, GNA was slightly down, uh, slightly reduced, 2016 compared to 2015. So 2015 it was 7.6 million, 2016 it was 7.2 million. Within that total, the, the biggest component is employee costs, which was reduced from 3.1 million to 2.8 million. And that's after we'd taken measures to increase the, the strength and depth of the, of the management team. Uh, so uh, we, in the course of the year, we, uh, we hired uh, Morris Mason, uh, who would previously been at Stiefel, to assist us in uh, investor relations and corporate development. But then after the end of the year, we've also taken on a, um, a company secretary uh, and um, in-house legal counsel and risk and compliance uh, manager. And that's, again, to help us reduce the extent to which we incur external third-party uh, legal fees. Um, which, we, which we need to incur from time to time to help us navigate the increasingly complex regulatory environment that we, that we work in. Significantly, in the course of 2016, and we did refer to this in a, um, a press release we put out in, um, in quarter in, in um, October or November, is that we did incur significant costs uh, relating to the uh, consideration of new investment opportunities. And so you can see towards the bottom of that table on page 9, we did spend $2.2 million on uh, professional consulting, legal, and advisory fees uh, compared to $1.2 million the previous, previous year. Of that $2.2 million, a component does relate to the continuance uh, from Canada to Jersey. Um, that costs, uh, I think, about three or $400,000. Um, and that, we did that, as, as we flagged up before, we did that to uh, reduce um, tax leakage on our uh, dividends and also to, um, to a... Uh, make our tax structure more efficient in particular so that we don't incur rather significant CGT liability in a few years' time on the repayment of the facilitation loans. Uh, on page 10, you can see the build-up of quarter-on-quarter uh, quarter of our uh, quarterly adjusted earnings per share. And there will be quarterly variations. We have good quarters, bad quarters. But I think it's quite clear to see now that the general trend appears to be um, increasing quarterly earnings per share. And the table, the table just makes it clear for, for the purposes of transparency exactly what the adjustments are to um, IFRS profit to arrive at the adjusted earnings per share. Page 11 sets out the, uh, the cash flows. And again, very strong cash generation, uh, despite uh, very significant investment and the continuation of our dividends. And so you can see that the, uh, the, the operating cash flow, the net cash from operating activities was $23 million in the year compared to $6.9 million in the uh, previous year. And as I mentioned, although the, the, uh, the profit and loss tax charge was, was about $7 million, of that, only $2.4 million was a cash tax. You can see, again, very continued, very, very uh, significant investment, nearly $20 million, uh, continues to be invested um, at the Blanket Mine, and that's very much in line with uh, our expectations. Um, and it's worth noting that the, uh, the continued investment in the central shaft remains broadly on track in terms of timing, but also uh, within, our, uh, within our budget expectations. Uh, looking at cash flow from financing activities, clearly we continue to pay the dividend of about $2.9 million. That dividend also includes the element of the blanket dividend that is paid out to the indigenous Zimbabwean shareholders. And you can see the proceeds from a, um, a term loan facility, $3 million. Uh, which we took out towards the end of uh, 2016. Previously, we'd had um, an unsecured overdraft facility at the Blanket Mine, but that was repayable on demand, and so it made us, it made us somewhat reluctant to use it effectively, even though we were paying for it. And so we converted that to a term facility, which means it's, it's, much, more, uh, it's much easier for us to, to use it, pay it back in a, in a structured manner, and it improves our capital efficiency in, um, in Zimbabwe. Page 12 just pulls together the, um, the, the cash flows, the net cash balances on a quarterly basis since uh, quarter one of 2015. It also shows the actual and forecast capex 
uh, actual for 2015-2016, budget for 2017, and our estimates for 2018-2019. There's quite clear from the, the chart on the left-hand side that the, the lowest point in our cash cycle was in the first quarter of 2016. Uh, that's when the, uh, the gold price was slightly lower, and we were still facing a very significant um, uh, capital investment a blanket. So that's the, that's the time at which we felt it was prudent to put in the, um, the hedging arrangement in the first quarter of 2016 to protect us from a, um, if the gold price fell lower, but also to allow us to continue to participate um, at higher gold prices. As our cash positions improved and as the overall operating cash flows have improved, given our increased production and lower costs, we no longer would feel the need to um, to hedge as part of our ordinary ordinary business. Page thirteen is the balance sheet. There's nothing really exceptional to the balance sheet. You can see the very significant increase in the um, fixed assets, uh, from just under fifty million dollars to nearly sixty-five million dollars. Uh, the working capital remains broadly stable, uh, both in terms of assets and uh, and liabilities. And so there's really not not very much of um, not very much of uh, the sort of exceptional interest to note on the on the balance sheet. Um, so really, that concludes the um, that concludes the the overview of the um, of the 2016 financials. Thank you, Mark. Um, I'm sure you have found the financial analysis as interesting as we do, and it does demonstrate the strength of the business. I'll now give you my perspective of the, the outlook going forward and uh, simultaneously we will uh, show you some very current footage that was taken at the mine recently. You will see the mine uh, above ground and below ground uh, highlighting uh, new areas that you may not have seen before and uh, the uh, operational progress that is being made uh, with Donna and, and his team. So from an outlook perspective, I'm sure you agree with me that the results speak for themselves and uh, the excellent performance at the mine level really does roll through into, into a very appealing set of financial results. And most importantly, when we, when we see that the earnings per share, the adjusted earnings per share has gone up from about $0.08 cents to $0.21. Cents, that's what uh, uh, the business is all about and uh, we really do have a strong and positive feeling about the future. So as a wrap up from my side, just some of the things that, uh, that I feel are important from a outlook perspective. Firstly, um, the, the investment program, which is vitally important to Blanket and the success of Caledonia, is continuing on track. We do have the funding and uh, we do have the expertise which we have proven uh, to deliver this project. So by 2021, we are very confident that the 80,000 ounce uh, production target will be achieved. Um, we are also quite positive that the benefits of rising production will result in a very much stronger cash balance. Blanket will have a stronger cash balance. Uh, importantly, you would have seen on the slides that the capital expenditure requirement is high in 2017 and then drops off quite significantly as the central shaft project is completed. Thereafter, we have got expenditure on normal sustaining capex and there will be additional stuff that is identified over a period of time. But the difference between what we're spending now and what we'll be spending in the future will be significantly lower. Therefore, Blanket will, will generate uh, a whole lot more disposable cash and will declare dividends and we as one of the shareholders will be a major beneficiary of that and the indigenization loans will therefore rapidly get repaid. So Caledonia will have a stronger and stronger cash position. We, we, we will continue to practice a conservative cash uh, approach. We are determined to be uh, masters of our own destiny and be able to paddle our own boat. But a rising cash balance obviously opens up opportunities for us as a management team to identify projects that uh, may be attractive to us in a portfolio um, and that we could afford or that we could uh, apply 
this uh, growing cash balance towards. So that's a very exciting uh, uh, prospect for us. Uh, as Donna mentioned, uh, I reiterate that our guidance for 2017 is the 60,000 ounces. No mean feat, uh, considering that uh, we don't have the central shaft available to us during 2017. We do have access uh, via the two declines into production areas below the 750 meter level, the 22 meter level. But uh, let's, not, uh, let's not underestimate what another 20% production increase means uh, to, to an operation of, of the uh, nature of Blanket Mine. We are confident, we've proven ourselves right in the past and we continue to, to believe that the mine and the management team there can deliver. So thank you once again for joining the call. We trust you found this informative and uh, we will remain in touch with our shareholder base as we progress through the year on a quarterly basis. So thank you once again and thank you to my colleagues and uh, cheers. Thank you.